Hello there. Um, I thought I'd do a little video, a little video about a little film called Suicide Squad that I watched uh, yesterday. Me and some friends. One of my friends very graciously paid for four of us to go and see it together, uh, and we did, and we did, and it was complicated to describe in terms of my thoughts on it. I don't know why I've just picked up a sock, but there you go. Um, better than Batman vs Superman. Oh, well, hang on, wait, no, retraction, retraction. It was more enjoyable than Batman vs Superman. It was a better cinematic experience than Batman vs Superman. Um, I'm gonna first things first. Well, I guess second things first. Cause I've already done those things. Um, I'm not gonna go into spoilers yet. I will go into spoilers later in the video, but I'll make sure to mention it and be clear. So don't worry. Don't worry, you're fine for now, I promise. Um, the film... Oh, God, how would I even start on this? I'm I'm just going to, you know, go straight for it that I didn't think it was that great. And I know some people have got a real kick out of it, and that's fine. You know, these things are subjective. It's okay. Um, for me, it's entirely possible my own personal bias came into play because I went in there expecting certain things to be flawed and I came out of it thinking those things were flawed you know and so it's a, you know your interpretation is going to be either that it failed in the ways that I thought it was going to fail or that because I went in there looking for those problems I found them um you know but I, I, you know for me I have to go with what I believe even that but i'm acknowledging that that might not be the full story anyway anyway here's the point here's the point the film really off the top of my head had two main flaws the first one was the 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 reshoots uh, it's well known it's well known at this point that it, the film went through some quite expensive reshoots after deadpool came out and was like hey we're an r-rated film we're all violent stuff but we're also really really funny and also after Batman for Superman said, hey, we're, you know, this film, but we're really gritty and edgy and serious. And people went, ah, we, we prefer Deadpool. So DC kind of went, ah, panic and learn lessons from those films, not necessarily the right lessons and decided, well, Suicide Squad, we need to make it funnier. We need to make it hilarious. And, you know, spent about, what was it? I think I've, I've heard a hundred million dollars. I don't know if that's true. That's just what I've heard from someone. But on these reshoots to, to add in more humor. And uh, that wasn't necessarily the right decision. And also to change the soundtrack because they, they like one of the trailers had jokes in it. From what I've heard, literally every joke that was in the film at the time. And also had like a Queen soundtrack said, so oh, no, we've got to go for this kind of musical style sort of thing uh the music was okay you know i mean it was there were, there were good songs in it it was weird because i never felt that the music that was being played had any relevance to what was going on it was just here's a scene and here's some disparate like 80s music going on <laughs> uh you know it wasn't there wasn't really a link between the two just Oh, here's music. Um, but also the humour. Here's the big problem with the humour. There's not nearly enough of it. They've done these expensive reshirts, but reshirts, reshirts, reshoots to put all these jokes in the film, and they haven't. They've put some jokes in the film, some quips, but not really all that many, to be honest. I mean, probably one every minute or two this isn't deadpool where it's like jokes constantly things going on in the background you know everything's so fast and so natural this this is the these jokes were rare and they were forced every time they stuck out like a sore thumb every time you could you could see the sanctu sec uh, the structure of the conversation you could see how like there was a new cut to him saying something and then him saying something in the middle of the scene that like you didn't need to be there was probably the bit that they added afterwards and the scene as a whole is still not quippy it's quite dark and quite oh that this everything sucks oh but here's a quip and then everything sucks it for me it didn't work they they could have they i don't know that it 
would have been a better film if they hadn't had the humor in. Maybe it would have. But I think it definitely would have been a better film if they'd added way more of it. Which they couldn't do. They couldn't do because that was never what the film was meant to be. They they changed their minds after they'd finished it, pretty much. Which is never really a good basis for this kind of stuff, if we're honest. So, the humour... Uh, maybe not the best approach. It, it should have been baked in from the start. It really should have. And... They, they, you, you can do gritty. You could do a gritty, dark, slow, intelligent superhero movie and have it be great. You know, Batman vs Superman could have been that film. This could have been that film, but they, they learned the wrong lessons from Deadpool and Batman vs Superman. They go, oh, people just want quips. You got it wrong. You got it wrong, and everyone told you you were getting it wrong. Everyone said that the moment Deadpool came out, everyone was going to learn the wrong lessons from it, and. The second problem. This is probably the deeper one. Uh, do you know, actually, I'm going to say three problems. I'm gonna, the, the second one and the third one kind of linked. So I'm going to say three things. Um, second big problem. <clears throat> they have all these characters in the film. And they do nothing with most of them. I mean, literally nothing. Almost every character has no development. I mean, Deadshot, he gets screen time. He's played by Will Smith. You know, he's like kind of the viewpoint character ish he he gets his time he gets a little bit of development he's cool you'll like deadshot um oh I'll, I'll, before I carry on i'll say this i'm i'm of the opinion that you know same as with batman vs superman almost all of the performances were great the actors did a really good job and visually it's an impressive film you know as as again as batman vs superman was these these are not the people who are in front of the camera you know the people who are making this the scenes they're, they're poor. They're doing their best. They really are. Bless them. They are. They are putting in the work. But ultimately, you can only work with what you've got. You know, you give Gordon Ramsay a tin of spam and a, you know, a loaf of bread. He's not going to be able to make much more than spam sandwiches. You know, it doesn't matter how good he is. Jared Leto, bless him. No, no, I won't get to that. I won't get to that. Let's stay. Stay on target. Stay on target. You see, I'm doing the Star Wars. Thing. Sorry, my it's whatever. Um, so the yeah, you've you've got all these characters, and they do stuff with Deadshot. They do stuff with Harley Quinn. Uh, the Joker gets a bit a decent bit of screen time, not a lot, but which is weird for reasons I'll get into later. And there's also I don't remember her name. I, th- I think it's Walker or Waller, but there's there's the lady who's sort of in charge of the whole uh, the actress you know the character who's in charge of the whole thing the actress who plays her she must be really happy with her role she she must be oh she did such a good job and it's such a good character and it's a shame it's in this Ooh. uh <laughs> but that that that's about it those three and may, arguably flag agent flag there's, there's like maybe four characters four or five characters that really get any kind of time there's other characters i mean there's one who uh ish, but for the most part the characters are just there they're just there they do nothing the whole film or very little and that gets me to the third point the third fatal flaw this film is almost empty of coherent plot and and coherent setup let me explain what i mean there there are as i said there's lots of characters in here who do almost nothing or they'll, they'll do one thing and the thing is they'll do one thing and it isn't that important a thing and it's it it feels like the only reason they were in the film at all is so they could do that one thing but that didn't need to be done so actually no Strike it. Flip it. It's like they had a character that they had absolutely no idea what to do with them. And so they hammed in like one thing for them to do that really wasn't that important. Just so they could have the character. And that happens so much in this film. There is so many things in this film. There's so many things that happen. There's so many like whole character. Like I'm not talking side characters. I'm talking main 
character members. I'm talking on the poster. I'm talking the reason you came to see the film. They're there from the start. They're there to the end. They do nothing. They don't... They do nothing. And I don't... I mean, in the plot, but I also mean from a cinematic point of view. They do nothing to enhance the film. They, they, they're they not there... They don't serve some other purpose. You know, it, it, in a film, you don't just necessarily have to be the person who's driving the action, the person who's saving the day. You know, you can you can serve a, a purpose. You know, you, you could be the advisor for the, the main character. You can be the, the person who gives them the moment of insight. You could be the, the person who makes the audience laugh. You can be the person who makes the audience cry. You know, you there's lots of things you could do without directly impacting the plot. And the characters in this don't. They just don't. Some of them do, but surprisingly few. Surprisingly few. And that's that's the big shame. It's it's the reason that this film is better than Batman vs Superman, and quite possibly the reason this film is worse than Batman vs Superman, is because it works as a dumb summer action movie. It it just you've you've got you know you've got your setup at the start. And then they they go and do the thing, and then it's just hey, here, da, 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 action scene, da, 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 action scene. The action scenes don't, for the mo- most part, matter. They're n- they're not really set up. They don't really pay off in any huge way. They're just there so that they can fight for a bit, and you you like seeing people fight, don't you? All right. Well, there you go. It's fine. Um. So yeah, that's that's my spoiler-free thoughts on uh, Suicide Squad, I guess. I don't think I can get much further without spoiling it. So um, I'm going to take a drink of this Pepsi. Because this show is sponsored by Pepsi. It's not sponsored by Pepsi. It's not sponsored. And when I've drank this drink, I'm going to go for spoilers. So you've got until I've drank this to bugger off if you're not interested. And if you are interested, I'm sorry for wasting so much time talking about the fact that I'm about to drink some Pepsi. Anyway, for those who are going, goodbye. Oh, pardon me. Hello. Right, let's get into it then. Um, I don't think... Let, let's go through the three flaws again. The first uh, there was the humour, the reshoots. I don't think I need, really need to say more from a spoiler point of view. You know, I'll, I'll just reiterate what I said before. They're, they're few and far between. And they don't really add anything and they just feel really out of place. For me, you know, some people might get a kick of it. I've heard people say that they find it find this film really, really funny. I didn't really see it myself. Um I I eh, I didn't. Uh number two. Number two was uh the characters the characters um too many characters not enough to do, right? That was that was the thing. I can't remember. Let's just go for him. Um yeah. Yeah. Captain Boomerang. His role in the film is... One time, he throws a boomerang with a camera on it so that the team can see around a corner before they go into a place. That's it. That's what Captain Boomerang does in the film. That is that is why he's in the... No, hold on. He does one other thing. He tries to convince the team that the bombs that they get given it, put in them so that they have to obey orders are not real. And it's just a bluff. Which leads to one of the other people. Uh, says, what, I don't remember his name. Slingshot? I, I, I didn't get his name. I didn't get his name because... He, I think he's on the poster from what I've heard. I haven't seen it, but like, I, I think he's been marketed as kind of one of the main characters. He's really not. He comes in, like, mo- all, all, the, all the main characters are introduced at the start. It's like, here's, here's, here's this person. There they go. This person comes in probably about half an hour in, and five minutes later, they're dead. You maybe hear the name once. I think they're one or two lines. And basically, Captain Rubo just says to that person, hey, these bombs are probably 
fake, so I'm just going to run away. Are you with me? And he goes, yeah, I'm with you. And then he tries to run away and they blow him up and he's dead. And now you know that the bombs are real and now the characters know the bombs are real. That was the only purpose for that character to be in there so that the other characters could know that the bombs were real, which they had no particular reason to doubt anyway. But also, I guess, so that the audience knows that bombs are real, which we also had no reason. Actually, that's another flaw. I'll come back to that. Hopefully. In fact, I'll say it now and hopefully I'll remember it. One of the fourth fatal flaw of this film is that there are so many possible surprises that it just doesn't go with at all. It, it it ruins every potential surprise way before it happens. Like, it doesn't even try to surprise you. Anyway. um, So the only reason that character exists he literally just comes in to die. And the only reason Captain Broomerang exists, pretty much, was to convince that person to die. So you have two entire characters, one of which is there for the entire length of the film that do nothing except impart one plot point which no one had any reason to doubt anyway. You know? Killer Croc. Killer Croc. He, his thing in the film, his big thing is he throws a bag. No, really. No, really. He throws a bag. He well, technically does two things in the film, but one of them's pointless. Towards the end, uh, some Marines need to swim down a place like through a, a sub, you know, subway that's been filled with water, and do a thing. And he goes, no, 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 I'm going to help you do the thing. I'm taking off my stuff. I'm going, I'm swimming first. I, I, I live in the place. You're just tourists. Um, that's one of those quips. Did you, did you like it? Um, but yeah. And so, and you're thinking, oh, so he's going to go and he's going to do the thing, right? That that was his purpose. They're they're gonna they're not good enough. They're gonna have problems. They're gonna get attacked or whatever. And he's gonna be the only one left. He's gonna do the th- no, no. It's one of the scuba guys does the thing. He's he's just there. He helps them fight a little bit, I guess, but he doesn't really save the day or anything. And then later on, he throws a bag. There's there's a bunch of them around. There's no particular reason he had to be the one to throw the bag apart from. I guess maybe he's a bit stronger than most of them but it's, it's not like none of them it's not like I, I'm fairly sure any of them pretty much could have thrown that bag you know arguably Harley Quinn wasn't in place and Deadshot was doing something else but that's it I mean the guy who gives him the bag to throw was easily strong enough to have thrown the bag and he did nothing else so Killer Croc is there so that they can say they have Killer Croc in film it's not even like he gets like memorable dialogue throughout the film it's not like he has like these weird interpersonal relationships with other characters that that's the that's the thing i want to make clear with all of this these characters i'm saying they're doing nothing i really do mean they're doing like nothing they're not they're not you're not getting they're not building relationships with anyone they're not like serving some other more subtle purpose really you know, they they didn't need to be in the film. The plot would go on fine if Killer Croc and Captain Boomerang and the other guy weren't there. No, nothing would change. Here's the big one, though. Here's, here's what's going to twist your noggin. Here's what's going to really piss you off if you haven't seen it. And this is why you were going to see it. The Joker. Jared Leto. The Joker, right? Again, I'm going to say pretty good performance. He gets quite a lot of screen time, mostly in flashbacks for Harley Quinn but quite a bit of screen time you know and he does turn up he he interacts you know it, it to what you know a bit towards the end he comes in and he does a thing and that thing is immediately undone and that's basically it i mean the whole plot was kind of i i guess from a wider point you know from a more subtle point of view you can say well his point until when he actually like turns up and does things was so that it was leading up to that. So everyone kind of had hope, oh, we're going to, you know, this is going to happen. We're going to be fine. And then he does his thing and it fails. And so they're not fine. And oh, they, we have to change our mind sort of thing. But then that's, I, I suppose I'm getting into spoilers. So let's just get into it. They, as I said, they've got the bombs in them. 
and the Joker's turning up to save Harley Quinn. He's got he's got like he can jam the signal for the bomb. So he's like, I'm gonna save Harley Quinn. I'm gonna and everyone else is like, oh, we're gonna save us as well. And he he doesn't, but you know, whatever. Um, but then then the chopper crashes. Like his escape fails, but he saves Harley Quinn, so she just rejoins the team, and everything's back to how it was before. Except that now they don't think the Joker's coming to save them, but they just found out the Joker wasn't coming to save them anyway. Just Harley Quinn. And then, almost immediately after, they find out what's going on for real, like everyone does. And then the guy who's in charge of him, who's like got the thing that like can make them explode, he breaks it. So it's as though, like, so all of that. So so the whole point of Joker failing was that that though then you know, the characters and the audience are going, oh, well, they're, they're stuck now. Now they have to do this. They thought they were going to get out of this. They're not going to. And then, then he gets them out of it. So the Joker, the guy who's on the posters, the guy who's, like, in quite a bit of the film, that so m- there's been so much controversy about the characterization. He's not really in the main bulk of the film. What he does do is pointless. But he takes up probably about five to ten minutes of screen time overall. And he does nothing. He, he does try. He does try. But ultimately he does nothing. You could remove the Joker from the film and the plot would not change. So now you have Captain Boomerang, Killer Croc, the Joker, the other guy that do not need to be in there. That that's that's half of the cast. Also, let's just go into this Batman. You pr- you you've heard you know Batman's in it. You've heard that he turns up, and you might be going to see the film. We go, oh Batman! I want to see Batman. Don't don't he he has like two, maybe three tiny appearances. And none of them are important. None of them are memorable. He, 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 it's not like this. Oh, the, you know, Batman's like the secondary character who interacts and changes the plot. And then, no, he, he's there for a tiny bit of the setup, and that's about it. He, he shows up in a dream scene for a couple of seconds and says nothing. That's that's it. That's that's, that's the thing with this film. There's. No one does anything. No one, no one does anything. There's one character who has character. You know, he, he his character evolves over the film, and that's that early on he doesn't want to use his power, but then later on someone convinces him to use his power. That's it, and they have they have an entire action scene. I, well, I, he gets a bit more. He gets a bit more later on. I'll, I'll be fair play. He's probably out of everyone. He's probably the person who gets the most characterization. But it's literally just at the start he doesn't want to use power. In the middle he uses his power, and then later on he's willing to like go all out of his power to help. That's it's kind of it, and you find out why, and it's, it's fair enough. It's good reason. Like I'd, I'd say he's probably out of everyone the character that gets the most. Like in the film, and so that's why I'm trying, even though I'm doing the spoiler a bit, trying not to say too much. But I think it says something that the the character who's getting by far the most characterization isn't really getting much characterization, and what's there is really cliched, kind of forced. And this this brings to the third bit. You know, everything's kind of forced because the scene where he decide, you know, he's like, ah, I'm not going to use power. Okay, I'll use my power. That entire scene was just there to have that. So you've got an entire scene. That's just there so a character will do a thing. And you've got a character who is doing a thing like just to get them out of that scene. You, you, do, you get, do you get where I'm going with this? That Both of those are pointless. They, they only serve to like m- enable the other. You know? If, if that character just was okay with using his power or, you know, someone convinced him in a way, just went, no, I can see I'm going to, before the night's out, you know, I know I, I'm going to have to do this. That you didn't, none of that, none of that was. It, everything in this film is forced. Everything, everything shows up once with no setup, with no payoff. 
just to enable something else. And just to enable something else that has no setup or no payoff. And it's it's maddening. It's really maddening because there's so... This film... There's so much room in this film, you know? This film... This film has so much space for 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 characterization for for meaningful action scenes you go through most of this film and you've got no idea what why the characters are going to a particular place or why why they're fighting well no no you can't that's not true because you know why they're going places because you're told right start we've got to rescue a person and so they're going there to rescue the person and when they get there like the person's in that tower okay we're going in that tower and along the way there's bad guys that turn up so they have to fight them and that, that's there's no great there's no bigger motivation along the way there's no bigger setup you know you never feel that tension that you know oh well, we know that things are going to happen that the characters don't you know that kind of thing never happens it's such a oh god it's just missed opportunities all the way it's Oh, the more I think about it, the more it's infuriating me, which is kind of like Batman vs. Superman. This film is weird because it's a lot like Batman vs. Superman, even though it's completely different. Uh, <laughs> it has a lot of flaws which are similar, even though they're not the same. Sorry, I just need to scratch my ear there. I don't even know where to go next with this. I did say um, oh, I did say there was a fourth floor, and I can't remember what it is now, and I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. I was going to forget what the fourth floor was. Um, but yeah, I don't, given that, I'm not sure I could really say much more about the film. I'll just say, like, if you just want to go and see, like, Deadshot and Del Diablo and Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn's really cool. Um, you know, if you just want to see them go along and, like, fight stuff and, and shoot things, then, okay, you know, that's... This this film will do that. You can do that. They'll you know, you'll you'll like Deadshot and Harley Quinn. They're cool. Um I think sometimes in the back of certain scenes you can see Killer Croc punching someone. Sometimes. Um, maybe. I, I didn't you won't really notice. Um Oh! Hang on, hang on, wait a minute. It's another character, Katana, right? Katana's only purpose in the film is to cut the hand off a bad guy that's trying to kill Captain Boomerang. This, by the way, is after Captain Boomerang has done the one thing which makes him useful, which is look, looking like he's, he's got a camera on a boomerang. Once. That's it. And and So Katana's only purpose is pointless, because... If Captain Boomerang had died, no one would mind it. And he didn't, he, from a storytelling point, uh, perspective... The only reason he was in that danger was so Katana could rescue him. Just, just see what I mean. Just see how so many of these things. The only reason the two things exist is so that the two things can exist. If you took away either one of them, and the other one like didn't work as a result, it wouldn't matter. You can get rid of them both. It from a. Anyway, I think that's all. I think that's all I'm gonna say. Like, I'll probably, as soon as I stop recording, I'll go, oh, wait, point four was this, and then immediately hit start recording and then edit, edit it together. We'll see. Surprise! There's a big lack of surprise in this film. That was the fourth thing. The fourth thing is that this film goes out of its way to not surprise you um, <laughs> quite often. And uh, let me be clear here. I'm not saying that it tries to do surprises, but kind of flubs it. It kind of fails. I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying that there are situations where they could have done a surprise. They could have done... A really decent reveal. And they just don't. They just don't. Quite a lot. Um, it's actually going to be hard to remember why. Because the whole point is. These are things that could have stood out but didn't. Um, but there's one particular one which really. Really gets me. Um, they've been sent. Into this city. <laughs> Hang on. Actually. Before I even start, let me let me just talk about one particularly poor bit of writing in this film. Um, the big monster, like the the bad guy that they're gonna, the bad thing that they're gonna face, has has been unleashed. Um, and so the Suicide Squad are sent in there to fight. And when they get there, I mean, the city's already been evacuated, and 
you know, every, lots of dead people, and there's these weird monsters. It's, oof, it's all gone. It, it's all gone very quickly. It's all gone incredibly quickly. But they're there, and they're going to save the day. And then, about half an hour later through the film, I don't remember exactly when you find out. It turns out that three days have passed. Three days have actually passed between when the monster occurred and when the Suicide Squad were sent in. But there is, you you don't realize that like the way it's shot the way it's edited the way it's presented to you it's like you know they were sent in as a fast response it was like here's the monster quick send those in and then way later in the film you find out that no like half a week has has just vanished in the middle and there's no explanation for it um including by the way one of the like main characters for the rest of the film apparently at the like the last moment you kind of see of you know you don't see it till later but apparently like when the monster appears the last thing that happened with them was that they were next to a really huge explosive that had one second left on the timer and you're not aware of like you don't become aware of that later and it's probably good because the next time you see them it's you don't know this but it's three days later and they're fine that it's Explosive? No, no. Oh, we're going to use that explosive later. How did you survive? Why did it not explode? What? What? No, it's three days ago. What? Uh, it, it's just so bizarre that, that it's it's this huge, this big time skip in the middle of the plot, and it's completely like you don't know. You have no idea that any time has passed. They act like oh. Anyway, I'm getting back to the thing. Surprises. It's a little springy. Um. The main reason they've gone into, they've been sent into this place, um, not to fight the big bad, not to fight the big bad. They've gone in there to rescue a high value target, HVT. I didn't figure out that HVT meant high value target until lit, literally about half an hour after we left the cinema, but whatever. Um, and so they go in and they're fighting their way across the city. And that's, that's like the bulk of the film. It's trying to get to this HVT. And they get there, and they go to the room before the room sort of thing. And then Flag says, hey, you, you guys stay here. I'm going to go in, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extract the target, right? So they're all, and, and I think Deadshot goes in as well. I don't remember why, but so they're all stood outside. And they're just doing their Suicide Squad thing. And then, then like, they come out of the doorway, and, like, you, you can see the way it's shot. Like, it's got, you know, first Flag comes out, and then... Deadshot comes out and the HVT's behind the if you don't get a clear look and then oh god it's the like the head of the organization that's controlling them it's it's the lady who's set all this thing up that everybody hates oh my god what a reveal if it had actually been done that way because that's not how it happens on the screen what happens on the screen you do by the way you do still get that shot of like like them in front of her as though that was the intention but the problem is you already know who it is at that point because what you actually see is flag go into the room and then dead shot and go into the room and then you go into the room and the, and flags having a nice conversation with her and then dead shots there and they're all talking it's like yeah here she is you know this is this is your person uh who you're trying to save no no one ever goes what it's you you know that they, they've like not at this point you know dead shots kind of or whatever and flags like yeah i kind of knew and then, then she just, oh, I'm not going to say what she does because it's one of the like best but worst things in the film. Like it's really from a cinematic, from a, a point of view of watching the film, it's great, it's brilliant. Like the character is evil. Um, I, I kind of, I'm just going to take a side thing. I love that character, and I hope that that like it, it's horrible to say this because it's a like um, it's sort of an indictment of the hollywood like how hollywood does things and how they cast movies but this one must be so happy with this role because they let, let's be honest let, here's the thing they're a small black female in their 40s i'm guessing maybe 50s i'm guessing 40s and they've managed to get a starring role in a film where they're not a loving like they're, they're not just sleeping with someone like it's nothing like that. They, you know, they're true to themselves. They're a politician kind of thing, and they are in charge of everything. They are like a, in in loads of the scenes. They're, they're a central character. They're the big 
like motivator of change in everyone. They're the one who pushes the plot forwards in almost every way. They're responsible for everything that happens. And on top of all that, about a top a top being like this really important, central, amazing character, they also get to go around like and shooting people handguns and shooting an assault rifle. And it's this like forty something year old little and you don't get that in Hollywood. You don't like it, it's it's one of the things that so many people get pissed off about. You're you're either a twenty, maybe arguably young thirty something woman who looks really attractive and then you get the roles where you're the attractive woman, or you're like really old and you get the one where you're the, the grandparent or a witch or something like that. And there's so few roles in that middle ground and I'll say this this one thing about Suicide Squad it does really well it gave it did something incredible with that role it really did and she deserves to be praised for being in that role and the film deserves to be praised for having that role um I I I hope she's really happy with the fact that she she got it because like roles like that are unfortunately incredibly rare and it's it's good it's good anyway the point is she so she's like so the, she's been revealed to the audience and the audience is a bit like uh but everyone in the film in that scene is like oh yeah it's her and then like a minute or two later then she comes out and then you get the reveal shot for the rest of the squad but it's ruined because we already know exactly who it is i just don't know why they did it you've got the um i'm trying to think of things um this is not really the same thing but it is a complaint I have. It's because it's not a surprise, a missed surprise, but it is a missed opportunity. Because, like, I won't go into too much detail because we're talking ending stuff now. But Harley Quinn, um, there's there's an enemy they face in this film who can do like mind fuzzy stuff. She can like cloud your mind, and she can also sort of. Um, like she could see your thoughts, see your desires, and make you see them, and uh, something like that. Um, and Harley Quinn, like, so she, she she's kind of a mind reader. I don't I don't know if she could strictly read minds, but she must be able to because she could see your desires, right? So Harley Quinn decides to kind of fool this enemy, um, and the enemy doesn't see it coming, doesn't tell what's going on, and the thing is. The thing is, you could, you could very easily have, you know, worked around this because the whole point is Harley Quinn is crazy. She is messed up. She's having these hallucinations and flashbacks and things. It's really well done. She's really cool. She's insane, right? And you could easily, easily have done it that this, you know, the baddie could not read her mind, could not confuse her because, like, her mind is all twisted and wrong and she couldn't see into her thoughts. And that's why... Harley Quinn was able to deceive her, and that's that's not what happens. She can affect her just like everyone else, but for some reason doesn't tell that she's lying. Don't know why. It's never explained. There's so much in this film that's never explained. And and and, and this is like I'm not asking for a pandering film here. If, if you know, like I would love for this film to be more complex and more interesting than it is, because it, it it's. It just doesn't try to explain everything. It's not... There's not much to explain. Um, God, I don't know. I'm probably going to leave it there. I'm probably going to leave it there, because otherwise it's going to be an hour-long video. And it's already, what, pushing 40 minutes? Mm. And I can't really... Like, again, I, like there's a, if you watch it, you'll see a lot of times when there's things which should have been a surprise, but weren't at all. And they were never, they never tried to make it. Which is a shame. Anyway, I'm off. I'm off this time. It's for real. Um, okay, <laughs> nothing more to say. Okay, bye.